What is up, GOAT world? It is me, your boy, JDZ, and I am back at it again with another GOAT format video. We are going to continue part three of the series. This time, we are coming at you with monsters. Thank you to everyone who watched the spells and the traps. Now we're moving on to monsters, and I had a really hard time making this list because I'm telling you, I thought there were a lot of traps, but there are so many really cool, not that often used monsters in our in our game in GOAT format. All right, we're gonna hop on into the monsters, but first, go ahead and, all, as always, make sure you go ahead and like this video Video and subscribe to this channel and turn your notifications into the on position if you can all right hopping on into it like I said the monster choices were absolutely stacked and I had I had so many options to choose from I wanted to make a second video but I kind of want to go ahead and get this thing knocked out so I still kept it to 10 but I am going to do five tribute monsters and then five regular monsters that you should consider playing tribute monsters in goat format are notoriously bad they have to be really really good if you want to even consider thinking about the idea of playing them so i just want to put those on here just to give people some some motivation maybe you can incorporate these into whatever strategy you are trying to employ so here we go we're going to hop right into it at number 10 the very first card i want to throw on here it should be no no surprise to anyone if you know me in any way or if you follow me in any way you know that i've been preaching this card for a long time a lot of people think it sucks but i have to disagree i have been preaching the sacred phoenix okay this is one of my favorite cards i love this card this is one of the cards i actually had to seek out in maximum rarity because i really like this card a lot i don't have a huge Yu-Gi-Oh collection by any means but i had to seek out this card because i enjoy it that much i think this card is very good i think it is criminally underplayed it is limited to one for a reason because it is so powerful if you don't know what this card does it says once per turn during your next standby phase after this card was destroyed by a card effect any card effect not to include yours and your opponents and since to the graveyard special summon this card from your graveyard if you do destroy all spell and trap cards on the field so it's like a huge heavy storm that keeps going over and over again each time it's sent to the graveyard it has a nice body you could cheat it out with the hand of nephthys the little side card that that goes along with it i think this card is really cool it looks cool and it has a great effect it is a double tribute and it is a monster of a brick this is a mega brick is, this card is a is a tremendous brick and especially if we're going back into a wing blast meta which is ironic because this is the card art on phoenix wing wind blast but uh if we go back to a wing blast meta this card becomes almost unplayable but still i think there are some merits to this card if you are brave enough to make it work the sacred phoenix should be a card that is played at a higher clip i love it but that's why i had to put it on here moving on to the next card this is also a tribute card and a card that i think it might be slightly underplayed as well this card you might want to consider playing is going to be the dark dust spirit okay again before you shut this video off you see the big phoenix you see the dark dust spirit and you're just like oh man i don't i don't i don't i'm not jiving with this video i'm not digging what jdz is talking about let me get out of here and save myself some time let me try to sell you on the dark dust spirit okay what this card does if you don't know the dark dust spirit when it is normal summoned or flip face up destroy all face up monsters on the field okay again any card that can give you the ability to plus, you should at least at a minimum consider it. At a minimum. I mean, you can consider it and then immediately just throw the whole idea right out the window, but at least consider it because card economy and card value and all that kind of stuff is what this game is all about. Like if you have played Go Format for more than a day, you know card advantage, you know the theory behind it, how important it is to our game. So any card that can potentially get value out of a plusing situation, you should at least consider it. And Dark Dust Spirit can do that under the right conditions. It also has a pretty nice 2200 attack and it's reusable. You know what I'm saying? Being a spirit monster, it will return to your hand at the end of the turn. So that is something that might want to be considered. I think the card also looks cool as well. I wish it had a higher rarity, just a common version. It kind of stinks. Maybe another one came out. I'm not sure. Let me know. Okay, moving on. The next card we are going to discuss, another tribute. So this is going to be the third tribute. We have the Dark Ruler. The Dark Ruler Hades. So the Dark the dark Ruler Hades, okay? I remember vividly back when I was playing this game the first time. This card was a menace. This card was everywhere. It was almost played as much as Genzo. It was just, it, it was so powerful. It was so dominant. A lot of people had the Dark Ruler in their decks and they were bringing this thing down and it was just absolutely smoking flip effects, smoking singing, smoking serpents. Uh, it would it would empower the rest of the fiends, you know, with his, with his secondary effect. This card is really good. I don't know why no one uses it. I've 
when you do come across this card on the ladder sometimes, it causes a lot of problems. I mean, granted, it has no protection. You can easily just fissure it, tribe it, mirror force, torrential, all that kind of crap. But I think when it's out there and it's protected and it's doing its thing and it's crushing all your stuff, you're just feeling bad. And it's powerful. That 2450 goes a long way, killing monarchs, clearing Genzo, clearing, you know, big defensive guys, spy, it just eats that up. It eats up all the stuff. And when it hits the serpent, remember, if it hits a serpent with that effect, it's gone forever. It doesn't come back. You know, it's not like, you know, when it goes to the graveyard, it resets. No, when that thing hits the serpent, it's gone. It hits the night of Salem, hits all the hits all the stuff. You know what I'm saying? So you have this guy out with maybe a timely my body, like from the previous video, protecting it. It, it just runs through a lot of stuff that people are trying to do. Again, we are going into a wing blast meta. Getting any of these cards wing blasted feels horrendous you know you don't want to get any of your tribute monsters put back on the top of your deck that would just set you back so far but if you can manage to get the dark ruler out get the protection it needs and just continue to attack the car is pretty good in, in a lot of in a lot of situations so it's all up to you to make the dark ruler work give it a shot and tell me what you think okay moving on we have the next tribute in the the next tribute in the list we have the blowback, the blowback attack, blowback dragon. People are starting to use this card. People are picking up on the blowback, and I love to see it because this card is problems if in the in the right in the right conditions, of course. You know, as all these cards are, it's got to be a conditions based thing. I see a lot of people using the reasoning gate strategy are starting to incorporate blowback dragon as a level six in there. I see a lot of people using the soul control strategy or the monarch style strategy and just kind of incorporating the blowback dragon as a as a tertiary or secondary type monarch because his effect is pretty good. You got 50 50 to destroy any card on the field, you know, any card on the field, unless you're me, then it's hundred percent not going to work. But for most people, you have a 50 50 chance to get the blowback dragons effect to work. And that could just cause a lot of issues. Again, like I mentioned, when I was talking about the Phoenix, as well as the dark dust spirit, any card that has a plusing potential, you want to at least at a minimum consider trying to make it work. And blowback dragon is that that effect is once per turn. You can, you know, use it multiple times or you can get that effect to go off at least twice. You know, you pay for itself and you've got tremendous value. Also the 2300, 1200 makes it Sukiyomi proof card is pretty good. I would consider using the blowback dragon in other strategies as well. It might be able to fit in go control. It might be able to fit, maybe not in turbo, uh, definitely can fit in reasoning gate. Definitely. Maybe, maybe not warriors, maybe side decked in warriors in certain scenarios. You might be able to squeeze in the blowback dragon, but I think this card is very good and it is criminally underplay as well. Cool. All right. And for the last tribute monster I want to talk about, this card probably does not belong on this list, but I just wanted to put it on here for everyone who may not know all the newer players. Again, huge shout out to everyone coming into the go format game right now. If you're just finding out about go format, welcome to you. And we, uh, we hope, I hope you enjoy your stay as you are learning to play go format. One thing, one card I wanted to point out is this next card. This card right here is super duper good. It's not a card that I think people aren't playing. I just don't think people are playing it enough. I think this card is verging or or merging or 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 rising towards like almost a staple like activity. I think this card is that good. I think Zaborg is that good. I think Zaborg can fit in any deck and I think his effect is just so potent and powerful right now in our metagame. Again, as I've mentioned in all of these videos, flip effect monsters are ruling the day. They've ruled this format. They are everywhere. They are omnipresent. Magician of Faith is a power card in this format. Gravekeeper Spy is probably one of the best normal summons you have in this whole entire format and it causes a lot of problems. Zaborg answers all that. If you can figure out how to use this card effectively, you can you can you can turn a lot of your potential losses into a lot of potential wins. Having that effect to come out and tribute it, pop a card, attack a card is just it's a plus, you know? So if you want to you want to you want to maximize your plusing potential and plusing opportunities. This card is a huge swing in the right scenario. So think about using Zaborg if you want. Give it a shot. When people use this card against me, it hurts. When I use it against other people, I get great effects. So that's why I'm telling you give Zaborg a shot. The card is really really strong. Okay, so these are the five tributes that I just want to talk about before I go into the five normal summon monsters that I want to talk about. Again, this list could have been easy easy 40 cards on here but i want to kind of keep it at a manageable amount and five and five i think is what i decided to land on okay so the first card i want to talk about that is a non-tribute monster that i think he should consider playing is going to be and i'm going to get probably crapped on for this one but i'm going to put it on here anyway because i don't care it is the banisher of light okay the banisher of light oh my goodness i had to put this card on here this card originally wasn't on my list but i played a ladder match i think 
a while ago. I forget who it was. Shout out to you if that was you that I was playing against. But I was playing this ladder match, and someone flipped up the Banisher of Light on me, and it just shut my whole my whole life down. Like everything was shut down. I think I was playing Turbo at the time, and this this Banisher of Light was just causing so many issues to me. And they flipped the Morphing Jar and just like removed all my stuff and play. It was a whole mess. You know what I'm saying? So after that, I was like, hey. This car is pretty pretty good. I always knew it was good, and uh, other other duelists I know, um, DG's DGZ Forever or DGZ Rampage now has been playing Banisher Light for literal years now, and he swears by this car. And a lot of people just kind of write it off as like a whatever, but I think this car is actually pretty good. You know, based on what it, what its effect is. Most meta decks are so graveyard resilient or graveyard reliant. They need their light and dark monsters to play the chaos cards. If you can just completely cut them off from that this car has great value also that 2000 defense is pretty strong a lot of monsters can't get over that the earth aggro strategy granted they play the uh, goblin attack force but if you can cut them off from the graveyard as well they're earth monsters they can't bring out the giganti they can't continue to oppress you so if you protect this banisher of light if you have another card to support it like like say necro valley or something banisher light necro valley together it just completely shuts off the chaos the chaos stuff that they're trying to do to you and it might you know stun a lot of people and cause cause some severe damage so i would consider trying the banisher of light i mean this card is pretty cool it, it, it does have glaring glaring weaknesses but it's definitely a card to consider you know what i'm saying it, it's a it's a pretty cool card and under the right conditions it can definitely uh it can definitely shut your opponent's game down banisher of light consider that okay the next card i want to talk about is going to be the legendary jujitsu master okay the legendary jujitsu master i seen uh, ajt our player of the year ajt bls flc champion was teching in the legendary jujitsu master and i think that goo is starting to leak into the rest of the dueling book situation because i've seen this card come up as well when i play my games or when i'm watching a game i'll just see people teching in the legendary jujitsu master and it causes fits it causes fits especially if you're playing like an aggro based deck if you're playing like a recruiter based strategy and you're attacking in with a bunch of 14 guys or you're attacking in with people that can't clear that 18 well guess what you're just sending cards back to the top of your deck you pair this guy with compulsory they're swinging in with blade knights at 2000 you bounce the other guy back to their hand blade knight now crash into this thing at 16 and now blade knights on the top of the deck so they got one guy back in the hand one guy at the top of the deck and that's just a huge swing of just timing and tempo and crap that now your opponent has to deal with this is a problematic card because again as i mentioned in the trap video and other videos that drawing is super important and this card manages what your opponent is able to draw so now you have more information you know what they're drawing your mind crush if you want to do that is now better so all these little tech cards can kind of just start teching in and helping each other i think the card is a standalone card it's a good card pretty solid stats deep beefy defense 1300 it's a three star so it can attack under gravity buying in a in a pinch you know it's another card that can that can that can do that so all the floodgates aren't as oppressive on you as well so i would consider trying the legendary jujitsu master the card also looks quite cool love to see it okay the next card that i'm going to talk about is a card that's also slowly starting to get teched in this car is amazonist archers okay i want to put that in here over the cannon soldier over the tomb cannon soldier over the hysteric fairy because people kind of know those cards they're already kind of using those cards i personally don't think the hysteric fairy is the way i don't think it's the answer i think they're a better card than hysteric fairy but if you're going to go the summon monster route I would go ahead and consider the Amazonist Archers over the Hysteric Fairy because you're doing damage and you are, and it's searchable. I've seen players starting to use this card. Uh, even in the previous Worlds event, I saw a few players using the Amazonist Archers because it can clear the Ojama stuff. It's searchable. It kind of kind of niche scenario, but it can attack under Messenger of Peace, which is another floodgate. It's, I think it's a good card. I think it's a good card. And that 1200 damage is huge. You know. Granted, you do have to have at least two monsters to activate this effect, but you also have to have two monsters for Hysteric Fairy. You're gaining life points that way, so maybe that one might be uh, might be good for you. For you, it also has the. Uh, it also has the 1800 stat line and it also is a light monster. If you want to go this route, maybe Hysteric Fairy is good, but also consider Amazonist Archers, especially if you're playing a warrior based strategy and you're already playing Rota anyway. You can just have this as another potential Rota target to just alleviate those tokens, make your life a little bit easier and just uh, and just do it that way. So I'll consider playing the Amazon as archers. If you don't know, now you know the goo is out. Try it and give it a shot. And tell me what you tell me what you think and let me know your results. I'm interested to hear what you guys are out there doing. Okay, the next card I want to talk about is another card I love and I think it's really good. It is the Apprentice Magician. 
the apprentice magician this level two dark spellcaster 400 800 okay it's a minute sometimes it can get busy it does its duty okay it comes in and it takes nobleman cross outs for you it takes battle hits for you it takes level two attacks for you it protects your other flip effects it can search the best flip effect in the game being magician of faith it can get that to the field it can get your hand of nephites if you're trying to run this whole phoenix thing this is a critical point in that if you want to play old vindictive magician there are there's some pretty decent level two spellcasters that this card can get can grant access to just by dying in battle another thing is if it's removed from play via battle dd warrior lady something like that the effect will still work uh this card is pretty cool i would consider using the apprentice magician however I must warn you, once your opponent sees that you're playing the Apprentice Magician, they can start kind of checking for it. They'll attack, you bring out Faith, and then they'll mind control the known Faith and then flip it on their turn because you could do that in go format. So be warned that once your opponent is realizing that you're playing with Apprentice Magician, they're going to start changing their game up a little bit around that, that concept. So keep that in mind. Also, that this card does not work with Creature Swap, okay? It does not work with Creature Swap. It does not have to go to the graveyard. So if you bring out out a prince magician you play creature swap send this to your opponent's side of the field and then attack it they get to get the two level two spellcaster monster out from their deck and not you so don't play yourself please but still i think the card is pretty good it can get again in the secondary effect that whole adding a counter or, or first effect i believe that's the first effect yeah the adding the counter does slightly come up when you're playing breaker the magical war you can add a new counter to that breaker load it pop again i think that's also pretty cool and the last card that i want to talk about the last card that i think is really good and you might want to consider playing is going to be none other than new doria doom, 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 doom. i've been using this card a lot lately too i've seen a lot of people picking up the new doria new doria is cool man i think this card is really cool I think the new Doria, his effect is nice because you can bring this guy out in certain situations. Everyone's playing Great Creeper Spy. Like I said, the card is heavily, heavily played in our current metagame. They bring out two. They try to they try to attack him with both. I mean, that sucks, and it does happen, but guess what? You bring out the new Doria, you can crash one and get the other one off too. That I mean, again, again, that's still just a at the end of the day, that's still a one for one, but it just feels good clearing two of those spies at one time when that does happen. Um, or bring this guy out, you can crash uh, You can crash it to the spy and then blow up the BLS if they have spy, spy, BLS, which is a very common board in our game, or spy, spy, Sork is a very common board. You bring this thing down, crash the spy, blow up the chaos monster, crash the spy, blow up the known set, crash, the, you know, something like that. That happens quite often in our game. Or you can just, hey, in a, in a pinch, you can crash this, blow up the BLS, or crash it, take the 18, blow up the BLS. You know, it's another, it's another out in a pinch. Uh, you can set this thing and just kind of throw off your opponent's battle phase. If they have a Kiko and they're trying to get into your graveyard and they try to, you know, attack in with a, a, a spy again, you can now blow up a Kaiku and kind of throw your opponent's battle rhythm off a little bit. I think this card is really good. It's criminal underrated. It also works really well with Creature Swap because if your opponent, again, has multiple monsters on the field and you're just kind of falling behind, you have this thing, you Creature Swap it over to your opponent's side of the field and then you attack it you now cleared that car and now you get to activate the effect because this effect triggers in the graveyard so that's pretty cool too so you blow up two of their guys uh if you can if you can manage to pull it off so I love New Doria. I think this card is criminal underrated. I wish it was three star. I think if New Doria was three star, it might be even better. But the New Doria being four star, is, it's cool. I think it's fine. But still, I would consider playing the four star 1200 attack fiend. And uh, I think it's really good. But here's my list. I think, again, this list, it could have been way longer. There are so many monster cards in our game that I really want to put on here. But I just wanted to keep it. Five tributes, five normal summons. Tell me what you guys think about it. Now that I have all of my goo or all the cards I consider goo or cards I consider playing. Maybe we can make like some type of ultimate goo deck and throw it on the ladder and try it out. Tell me if you guys are interested in trying something like that. I will be more than happy to do it. Make sure you like this video. Go back and like all the other videos and uh, comment on this video if you want to see a goo down and ultimate goo battle. I can try to make the gooeyest goo deck using a large percentage of these cards and uh, and see if we can make a, make a win. Probably won't, but we can make it happen. We can give it a shot if that's something you guys are interested in. Also, thank you so much for everyone for watching these videos as always and being part of go format it means a lot but that's all i have for this video until the next time shout out to the real ones salute to the ogs i'm jdz i play goats you should too peace
This program was made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.